Welcome to the Rev and the Rav, a program of interreligious dialogue and discovery. My name is Rabbi Daniel Lehman, president of Hebrew College. And I'm Nick Carter, president of Andover Newton Theological School. Welcome. In our last program, we had the opportunity to discuss Thanksgiving and Hanukkah and Thanksgivinga this year. Uh, now we turn our attention to the upcoming holiday of Christmas, and particularly this period before Christmas, Advent, which uh, for Jews is somewhat mysterious, Nick. We don't really know uh, what this preparatory period means, and we're actually even a little um, curious and puzzled by Christmas and its centrality in Christianity um, as compared, for instance, to Easter, which we get uh, in terms of its religious significance, but Christmas somehow seems to us to be uh, more commercial and, and less uh, religiously focused. And I'm curious about both Advent and, and Christmas from your perspective. Big subject. Well, uh, first let me say I agree with you uh, that we're a little confused of, about how Christmas has come to rival Easter. Easter is and will always be the central event for defining Christianity. And it's interesting because, of course, Easter and Passover are in a parallel. Yes. And so for Jews, Easter makes sense because you know, it right. relates to the Passover holiday, which is our central right. holiday. Uh, Christmas, for the first... Well, there, there were indications of interest in dating Jesus' birth. Uh, it was never clear. And it really is an extension from the conclusion that Jesus was probably born, uh, uh, the Annunciation took place in the spring. Uh, shepherds keeping watch over their flocks at night, that's not going to happen in the cold right, winter. winter right. It's going to happen in the spring. Um, and also some relationship between uh, uh, the birth of John the Baptist and, and Jesus. There's some dating times, some months uh, uh, between the two. Right. Would it also make sense that they would work backwards from assuming that Jesus' circumcision might have been you know, January 1st and then he yeah. worked backwards? Or? Yes, I think it's a little bit of both. I think you can work back from circumcision and forward nine months from the Spring Annunciation, time. from the pregnancy, uh, that tries to put it together. There were been several speculative dates, and there's a lot of controversy about trying to pick December 25th. Um, and there, are, and of course, there still is some difference in tradition, the Orthodox traditions and and um, the sort of bulk of Christianity that uses December 25th. It really didn't get established uh, until the Constantine era, um, uh, fourth century that it was really sort of established. But even at that, uh, Christmas was not a big celebration. It was just recognized. It was still all focused around Lent and Easter. And it wasn't really until um, uh, the Reformation that things started to expand for Christmas and then really blew open by uh, the late 18th and mid-19th century. Uh, How did the Puritans... Oh, this is very interesting. Things? There was this real question uh, in the Reformation of trying to separate yourself from the Roman Catholic tradition. And uh, while Martin Luther was very interested in, in, in Christmas carols and things like that, the celebration itself was, was more modest uh, as, as the traditions emerged. But the Puritans themselves wanted nothing to do with Christmas. They saw it as, as a, a pagan celebration Kind of idolatrous in the sense well, of focusing yeah, on Yeah, in, in some ways. But they, they saw it being borrowed from some uh, Roman uh -huh. Saturnalia, of and sort of this uh -huh. kind of uh, solstice kinds of things, right. and saw it as a, a feast of gluttony sure. uh, and celebration and thought that it should be uh, more modest and then got to a point where they wanted to have nothing to do with it. And the Puritans actually outlawed Christmas wow. for about 150 years. Well, I'm sure the retailers had had problems with that. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, there was absolutely nothing. Now there were other places in America, uh, Pennsylvania uh, and and Virginia and places like that, who have different religious traditions. Uh, Quakers in Pennsylvania, um, and there's some good German roots in Pennsylvania, uh, where Christmas in Europe was was uh, was expanding. 
and then in, in uh, Virginia, uh, Episcopalian traditions and things like that. Uh, eventually, it came back to New England, uh, but there is uh, there's a lot of jokes about the the Puritans wanting nothing to do with Christmas, and in the face of the commercialization, there are people that they are saying, well, maybe the Puritans had a point. Uh, uh, yeah, it's well, interesting because the commercialization is so much stronger than than what you have for Easter, and in many ways, I guess Easter retained some of its religious purity in Christmas, maybe because it didn't have all of all that weight, that religious yeah. weight, uh, you know, took on this commercial aspect of it, uh, and that propelled it further away from its religious. Yeah, we, I think Christians really struggle with the sort of tidal wave of culture that has taken over Christmas, and while Christians uh, bristle at happy holidays and the sort of secularization of our holiday. Um, that with the emergence of Santa Claus and all these other things that have very little to do with the, the true Christmas story. Um, I mean, there are bridges that are made and justifications for all of that. But the cultural pressure is so great that you really come off as a sort of bah humbug kind of person uh -huh. if, you, if you try and fight it. Right. And so we find ourselves constantly trying to salvage some of the Christian message. And how does Advent help with that? Yeah. I mean, does that yeah. introduce a more introspective yes. element? Advent for Christians has, um, would be parallel Lent. It's a time of preparation right. for a high holy day. Uh, and Advent, on one sense, is the coming of Christ. The uh, anticipation. In, in, a coming of, of God into the world, of, into humanity, and anticipation for that. And it's a time of reflection and discipline. It also has an overlay for the second coming of Christ. And you'll find both themes play out. It's a time of hope. That's with the liturgical colors uh, for liturgical churches is purple. In some cases, blue, but representing hope. So can uh, I ask you, yeah. does Christmas then, and Advent and Christmas, take on a kind of creation theme? Because in the Jewish calendar, our high holiday... Uh, especially Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. is a celebration of the creation of the world. We say this is the day that the world was created. And there's a sense of celebrating that um, creation story, even though the, the Torah readings are not the mm -hmm. creation narrative, there's a whole liturgical theme um, of this is how we reflect upon God as the creator and the creation of the world. And I'm wondering if Christianity has a similar creation emphasis, and is Christmas playing that role? It, in, in some ways. Uh, there's a lot of traditional Christmas imagery uh, that has emerged that include eternal life and the promise and hope of eternal life. The presence of green, not that I'm a big favor, uh, a big, big in favor uh, of the aesthetics of, of red and green, right. <laughs> But they're chosen, uh, for the, both the wreath, the circle right. uh, of eternal life, the green of eternal life, ever and green. evergreen, the Christmas tree right. uh, is also supposed to be a Trinitarian shape. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, no. And green eternal life. Right. But the traditional uh, wreath is a holly wreath with green prickly hollies right. and, and red, red berries which is supposed to be uh, symbolic of, of the crown of Christ, uh -huh. the crown of suffering, the thorns, uh, the, thorns uh, the, the blood of Christ, and the green of, of eternal life. Um, so those themes play out uh, throughout, throughout the holiday. Right, but eternal life is different than celebrating the creation of the world. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm wondering where yeah. in the Christian... Uh, liturgy or in the Christian right. calendar you have that because you'd think you'd want to have that kind of more universal yeah yeah focus. no we're actually it's it's one of the weaker points hmm. of our uh, liturgical calendar I, I think we're, we're fine on our theology right. about creation right. but but in terms of when do we celebrate it uh, you find it as a sub theme that plays out in, in different times and different clergy will pick it up and 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 play with it um, particularly in terms of what was God's intent? What did God intend for creation? Right. Um, 
um, in what's with the coming of, of Christ, there is this this sense of this is God's love present in the world. That God decides to come and uh, assume a human form, and there is this sense of so what did God intend? What is the purpose? What is meaning and purpose? And it makes you reflective on all creation. The word all creation also appears in many Christmas carols. Hmm. Um, um, and all creation sings. Or, right. or, so there is that sense of, of right. the universal. Right. But more of a, it's, it's more subtle. And it really is up to individual clergy to begin to pick it up and play it and play it out. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, in terms of what happens within church communities during Advent, or there's what's the... Uh, the focus well it, it spiritually it, it, it uh, advent is a, a very important be, began time of, of preparation um, I think we at one point we did talk about the uh, advent wreath right that's and most churches you would see this lighting that with the four candles and the Christ candle in the center and each candle has a different theme that's then explored um, the first candle actually is one that reflects on the prophets and the Hebrew Bible, Jeez, and um, uh, the, that's where you see all the illusions uh, and the yearning for a Messiah uh -huh. um, and the promise that comes. And then it builds to uh, issues. You add candles? Yeah. No, so you're there, sort of increasing when light? You see, when you see, f the, it would be four candles with a fifth in the center, uh -huh. and each Sunday, typically what would happen uh, in most churches, you'll have a, a, a lay family right. will come up and do a reading, uh -huh. and then together they'll light the candle, uh, one candle. One candle. Then when you come the next Sunday, one candle will be burning, and then they'll light another candle. Right, so that's interesting because there's a parallel of the Hanukkah that you yes. add candles, yes. you know, as it sort of gets darker yes. in the year, you're right. actually bringing more light. More light. So the coming of light, right. the coming of light is a, 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 a big uh, thing, you know, the sign of righteousness. Right. Uh, coming, right. yeah. Right. You know, so, that that would be a typical thing. The other thing it would be, um, uh, early in, in in Advent. Sometimes there is a, a more penitential, reverential uh, time, um, where there might not be any instruments played. Hmm. It'll be all a cappella singing. Interesting. Um, uh, and then building uh, to. Uh, uh, to the final week, and then the center of the of the Advent wreath is the single uh, Christ candle, which would be lit in, lit on Christmas Eve uh, during Christmas Eve services. Uh, the Christmas Eve service is typically the bigger service than the Christmas Day Christmas Sunday service. Right. And in terms of attendance, uh, is it more well attended than absolutely than Easter? No, no. Uh, well, Easter still has. Uh, one of the jokes uh, is is that <laughs> clergy, you, you, clergy talk is, is that you have uh, C and E members, Christmas and Easter members, right. who show up for the big for the big for Christmas right. Eve and, and Easter Sunday. Um, you know, it's a it's a joke, but I enjoy it. I really do. I love I love Christmas Eve services uh -huh. um, and. But the fact that it's not on a Sunday versus Easter, which is always on a Sunday, doesn't that Sunday service have greater oh, significance? Yes. Easter has so much more depth theologically, um, so much more uh, uh, reason for celebration, and so much more alignment. You know, you know, for Christians, you know, it's the first day of the week, Jesus rose on Sunday, you know, that's Easter, and that's how we define ourselves. Right. Now what's interesting is, from a Jewish perspective, I think we could probably relate more easily to Christmas because, you know, the celebration of birth and yeah. all of the birthing right. rituals, which, right. you know, we have too. And Easter is more difficult theologically for most Jews because of the notion yeah. of resurrection and the whole yeah. messianic focus of it. And yet, Easter is much more parallel in many ways to Passover, and Christmas has very little to do with any of our Hanukkah yeah. themes. So while at Easter, you know, in some ways is closer and has yeah. you know, some of the Passover elements to it, um, theologically it's much harder for Jews to relate and to understand uh, the whole focus on resurrection and the messianic elements sure. of it. Um, and Christmas uh, becomes more understandable, even though it doesn't have yeah. the theological are we, significance. Are we interested, uh, maybe to finish, uh, is 
Christmas has sort of taken over American culture. It's, it's even gone, been taken away from, from Christians. Um, and it's, it's, it's pervasive. And I think it might be helpful for you to just, if you would just reflect about what it, what it is to be Jewish in the midst of this sort of uh, overwhelming sea of, of cultural Christmas. Yeah, I mean, listen, I remember uh, driving with my family, you know, during uh, December break, you know, down to Florida and listening to Christmas carols the entire way, you know, and singing along. You couldn't find a channel that didn't no, play them. No, it's not that. We actually enjoyed it. Um, so there is a sense of growing up with that whole Christmas culture uh, as an American yeah. um, that feels very natural and comfortable. Um, and there are many, many Jews, of course, that, uh, you know, who are parts of intermarried families, um, have Christmas trees and don't accord so much religious significance to it, but culturally becomes really a part of their, mm -hmm. um, their celebration. Um, and there's a lot of Jewish angst about, you know, how do we as Jews in America um, engage this because it is pervasive uh, and it's ubiquitous. Um, and yet it feels foreign and it feels um, that uh, we've kind of been co-opted mm -hmm. into this uh, you know, winter holiday season, which, you know, clearly has this Christian core, and yet there's so much around it which has been secularized and commercialized. Um, so it's a real dilemma. And, and um, in, in American Judaism, it's called the December Dilemma. Ah. You know, it's how do you um, deal with all of the Christmas themes, um, both commercially and religiously, as a Jew? You want to participate you know, in this kind of American uh, culture and celebration. And yet, you know, as a Jew, obviously we are um, uh, distant from the, the Christian themes. So Frosty it. the Snowman and right. Santa are a little easier Chestnuts to take. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, yeah, you know. Yeah. Great. Nat King Cole you can do. <laughs> exactly. Right, yeah. um, but I, I think it's complicated yeah. uh, because it has become so much a part of American culture that it's not simple for the Jew, for the Jews, especially those who are, you know, heavily engaged as, uh, as Americans in American culture to disengage from that. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's complicated and I think uh, there are more and more people who um, who connect to it in various ways and don't see it so much as a religious conflict, even though you know deep yeah. down there is. A, a real well, it's difference. a fascinating issue, and maybe we can just sort of end with a, this this observation that you know re remaining faithful to one to one's to one's religion in a dominant culture is a challenge, but even a challenge for uh, those who are part of the majority. Uh, to hang on to something when your society, the sort of pluralism of your society, takes, takes it bit, over. Takes it over. Uh, and then how do you differentiate without becoming a curmudgeon right. with what are basically nice things? Right. You know, right. uh, it's, it's an interesting challenge. Yeah. Well, folks, we, we thank you for being with us uh, in this ongoing discussion and discovery of uh, Christians and Jews. Uh, thank you for being with us in this season of Advent. I'm Nick Carter, president of Andover Newton Theological School. Peace. I'm Daniel Lehman from Hebrew College. Shalom. <laughs>